Hey guys, welcome to the Pop'em Up Chem and I'm Mr. Elliot and this is lesson one of unit one of IB chemistry, moles and the number of particles. I'm going to kind of use this lesson to introduce you to a little bit about the things I'll be including in the lessons and the expectations as we go along as well. So pretty much every single lesson will begin with this kind of page. You'll have your title at the top and then usually a refresh question which will be based on what you've done previously and that's just to get you started. I also apparently can't spell there and should have picked that up but it's too late now. So the way this page is set up is to just guide you through what you'll be seeing through the lesson. These objectives will be on the bottom of every single page and as one starts you will see it appear at the bottom of every page as we go through. They're graded although these grades aren't fully linked to IB grades, they represent the kind of structured cognitions and developments from things like defining, describing to calculating that you need to be going through in order to attain higher grades. On the right hand side, we have our keywords. And those are things that you should be on the lookout and making sure that if they come up in the lesson, not to overlook them. So let's get to it then. We're going to start with talking about numbers and words and probably things you've heard of before things words like a pair a trio a dozen maybe some you haven't a gross a grand a score and what we're going to do is i'm going to give you these and we're just going to do some simple problem solving just to get you warmed up and right into it and so i can introduce the whiteboard section now i know you might be using this at home you might not have a whiteboard but Really, I just want to kind of give you a flavor for what it's like in my classroom and what you'd be doing with me. So here are the rules. These are obviously not going to be the same for when you're at home. I always told students to not put sketches on the whiteboards, which they always ignored. And I told people to wait until I told them to put the board up. In fact, I told them to wait until I said, pop them up hence the name of the channel. And it's really important you engage with this element, guys. So you need a paper, a whiteboard, something you can try questions as you're going along. That is really, really important. It's gonna make you feel more involved and it's also really good for your learning. So I would suggest having one book for maybe your notes or a OneNote folder for your notes and then just a piece of paper, a pad that you can really be trying stuff in because the truth is you need to get stuff wrong to learn. You'll see I get many things wrong in these presentations, including spelling, not my strong point, quite heavily dyslexic. So I get things wrong, everyone gets things wrong, but the more I apply myself and the more you apply yourself to questions as they come along, the better. When you see this slide, you know you're about to do some questions. Here we go then. What does that look like? Well, usually the slide will look something like this. So I'll have a question up on the top. This one's relatively simple, but I'll have a question up at the top. I won't always have information on the right hand side to help you. I just put that here because I want some problem solving. So you'll see how many eggs are in two dozen. I want you to actually do that question now. You'll see this pause sign for when I want you to pause the video and to have a go at a question. Hopefully how many eggs in two dozen isn't too challenging for you. But when you see this sign on the screen, pause the video and have a go at the questions that are on it. So make sure that you do that now. Pop them up. After a few moments, you'll usually hear some sound similar to that from me. And that's me asking you to put up your answer. Now, obviously I'm not gonna see your answer, but you can evaluate it compared to what is on the board, the answer on the board. Sometimes I'll do what I've done here and just give one answer. And sometimes I'll give a worked answer. Obviously two dozen eggs, two times 12 equals 24. So I'm gonna give you a moment and we're gonna go through with the same process again. It's gonna be a question, a pause. On the pause, you can attempt the question. Here we go. How many pencils in 4.5 dozen? Pause the video to give yourself a moment for that. 
Pop them up. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now, hopefully you saw that a dozen was 12, and so 4.5 times 12 equals 54. Let's keep it going. How many dozens of eggs is 36 eggs? Pause the video and give yourself a moment for that. Pop them up. Yes, the answer is, of course, three. All you have to do is 36 divided by 12, which is the number of eggs in a dozen, and you get three. So how many grosses of pencils is 504 pencils? Pause the video. Pop them up. It is indeed 3.5, 504 divided by 144, 3.5. So you're getting the hang of this. Let's just do a couple more. So we've ramped up the difficulty. I want you to tell me how many legs there are in 10 scores of cows, assuming no genetic deformations or abnormalities, no three-legged cows. Pause the video, give yourself a moment for it. Pop them up. So hopefully here that you got the 10 score and there's 20 in a score. So you did 10 times 20, which equals 200. And of course, cows have four legs. So 800. So here's another one for you to have a go at, this time with dog's legs. So pause the video, have a go at that now then. Pop them up. Hopefully you got the answer was five, seeing that there's 240 dogs divided by four must mean there's 60 and we want dozens, 12 is five. Okay, last one, I promise. Pause the video and have a go at this last one. Pop them up. Well, here, this is a hand, or at least it's an attempt at a hand. I could do with some artwork people. Anyone wishing to contribute artwork to the channel, please let me know because I'm a terrible artist. The point being is we have four fingers and a thumb on the human hand. So we actually have three times four, which equals 12. Awesome, guys. Okay, so why do we even do all of that? So the reason was to introduce the mole and what a mole is. So the mole is just another word like pair or trio, except this number is very, very large and it has a significant importance in chemistry. So 6.02 times 20, 10 to the 23 is a gigantic number. This is the kind of number that if you were to stack peas one by one next to each other, that this would be larger than the size of the entire observable universe. So we're using this number to describe very, very small things. And the person that first posited the need for a number like this was a guy called Avogadro. And so the number is called Avogadro's number or given the term L. So what's the point? Why do we need this? Well, we need to define it. And the old definition is we used to define the mole as a it's relative to the number of atoms in 0.02 kilograms of carbon-12. Now that was changed on May 20th, 2019. The mole was actually the last SI unit to have a definition based purely on physical laws of the universe. And so here you can see the diagram of the SI units. In fact, with these SI units, we can determine all of the physical properties of the universe, at least within the known realms of science. And this is a key component of that. So that's why we need it. Yeah, we need it as much as we need to be able to weigh things or know the time or the distance over which something occurs. So now we can start a journey and that's gonna be what we're doing in this first unit. We're gonna be looking and focusing on these moles and pressure, concentration, mass. Today, in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at the number of particles, of course, as the title indicated, but 
it's important to remember, and I will bring this back up as we go through this unit, that these all relate together. Moles are at the center of these. All of these seemingly different things, volume, concentration, mass, they are all fundamentally related. And that is what this unit is all about. It's about bringing those ideas together and about being able to solve problems using all of those skills. So in this video, we're going to be looking at relating moles and the number of particles. We do that with the equation N equals capital N over L, where N is given as the number of moles. And so we write moles with the E instead of S and the unit is MOL. That's the number of moles. So that's just like kilograms where we write MOL or kg. Then we have the number of particles, which is just a dimensionless number. That's the capital N. And then we also have L, which is Avogadro's constant, Avogadro's number, which is also a dimensionless number. And they give us moles. And of course, we could rearrange this to solve for each of these individually as well, which we'll look at. So in this first example, we've been given a number of molecules of water. So I'm just going to write my equation down. So I've always got it there. And I'm going to highlight in the question the thing that is important to me. So that's the number of molecules of water and what the question is asking me for, which is the hydrogen atoms. So I know I'm looking at H2O and I've got this many molecules of H2O. So it would seem initially that it's quite simple. I do my number of molecules of water divided by Avogadro's number. However, it said hydrogen atoms. And you can see here that there are two atoms of hydrogen in every water molecule. So we have to multiply the term by two so we get 6.02 times 10 to the 24 multiplied by 2 over 6.2 times 10 to the 23. And this, of course, gives us a slightly different answer. And the answer in this case is 20 moles. So just a quick segue into a little note on the nature of chemical formula and writing chemical equation. I'll probably look at this in more depth, but a lot of this stuff I may already assume you know and you may not. So just checking in. But let's take this equation of the combustion of methane, for example, CH4 plus O2 goes to CO2 plus H2O. There are two types of numbers once we have a balanced equation. There are these small, little numbers. These numbers cannot be changed by you. They can be determined by you if you know them, but they cannot be changed. This is the number of atoms that are present in an individual molecule. And then there are the other numbers, which are these large numbers. These are the stoichiometric coefficients, and these can change based on what we need to balance the equation. So I just wanted to make a little note on that in case anyone was unclear about the differences there. So in this example, we have one molecule of methane, which is CH4, which contains one carbon and four hydrogens. So it contains four hydrogens, but there's only one molecule. Whereas with oxygen, there are two atoms of oxygen and also there are two molecules. Looks like it's that time again. On your whiteboards, whatever you've got, how many moles of fluorine atoms are there in tetrafluoromethane? Now get used to having the periodic table around you at all times for this, guys. Pause the video, give yourself a little bit of time for that. Pop them up. So hopefully you saw in this question that it was asking for atoms of fluorine. And so we're going to be using our numbers and Avogadro's constant. We're going to rearrange to get number of atoms by itself. So multiply through by L. There are four fluorine atoms in CF4. So we're going to do n equals 4 times the number of moles that we have a tetrafluoromethane multiplied by L. So we do 4 times 2.5 multiplied by L 
So effectively we get L multiplied by 10, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 24 atoms. I hope you found that okay, guys. So that kind of concludes the first part of our journey, or at least the instructional part of it. Remember, you do need to be practicing this. So what do I want you to do? Well, there's nothing left on the channel for this at you at the moment, and there's also no practical that we're going to follow along with this. There is in the worksheet workbook, however, questions on moles and number of particles, which I want you to practice, complete, and really get to know this so that you're able to move forward in the unit as best as possible. Thanks for joining me on Pop'em Up Chem Guys. That's this episode done. Please make sure like, subscribe and share the channel. Remember, practice makes slightly better. <laughs>